the gas pump. Gas is the lifeblood of our cars, but it's also toxic and highly flammable. How does the pump fill our tanks without everything going up in flames? More than 2,000 spark-proof parts work together. Carbon blades lift fuel from an underground tank the size of a swimming pool. A vortex chamber removes bubbles from the liquid, while a filter extracts particles. A meter measures the fuel to the 10 thousandths of a gallon, and a belt-driven vacuum pump sucks out the flammable vapor so the fumes don't ignite, safely filling more than 400 cars a day. But how does this machine always dispense the right amount of fuel and guarantee we get exactly what we pay for? The gas pump is the workhorse of the forecourt. It tirelessly fills tank after tank. Every drop of fuel must be carefully measured. Nobody wants to pay for fuel they don't get. The key to this accuracy is in how the pumps are built in this UK factory. This is the largest operation of its kind in Europe. To measure the fuel, workers install a precision-engineered component called a volume meter. Very important that the meter is accurate or the customer will receive the wrong amount of fuel. Carol and her team built the meters carefully by hand. I'm checking that the seals are not damaged in any way as I'm putting them on. Seals are very important because any damage to them would cause a leak inside the meter and cause the wrong amount of fuel to be dispensed. Carol ensures the seals on the pistons are undamaged and fits them in the meter body. She then calibrates it to check it is accurate. Inside the pump, the meter goes to work when you fill up your car. As the fuel flows through the meter, it pushes the pistons in and out. This rotates an interlocking set of gears that steps up the speed. The gears drive a magnet mounted on a disc that spins past a sensor. A computer picks up these magnetic pulses and records each rotation. This system counts up the gallons with extreme accuracy. So what you see is what you get. The meter is just one of 16 switches and valves inside the finished gas dispenser. They all need electrical power. Wiring is a really critical stage because if it's not connect it correctly, the dispenser will not work on the forecourt. Jim makes sure that all the pump parts plug together correctly. Even perfect wiring is still potentially dangerous. Gasoline vapor is highly explosive and should never mix with electrics. A vapor's came up from the bottom half of the pump into the top half of the pump. There could be a spark and a catastrophe, a fire at the forecourt. To make sure this can't happen, Jim passes the wires through a rubber seal. Because it's a tight fit, it clamps onto the wire and makes it a good seal and stops any vapor. With the pump's electrical sensors safely connected, Jim's work is done. But the computer doesn't control every sensor inside the pump. It's a mechanical system that stops the pump overfilling your tank. If the pump doesn't shut off when your tank is full, it could flood the pavement 
with highly flammable fuel. So how does it know when to stop? The secret lies in the nozzle itself. As gas fills the tank, air is pushed back of a small channel. The air holds a flexible diaphragm in place. When the tank is full, the fuel blocks the air channel and the diaphragm deflates. This releases a spring that forces a valve shut and cuts off the fuel. This automatic mechanism allows the machine to pump furiously, but halt in a split second so it doesn't overflow. This built-in cutoff switch means you'll get a full tank instead of wet feet. Each pump faces a rigorous inspection before it can be installed at a gas station. Dennis makes sure that each new unit is up to the job. It is critical to check the pumps will dispense the fuel at the right speed. So you're not taking 10 minutes to fill your car up. It's coming out at a good rate, but then again, it's not coming out too fast so that the petrol would spill all over the place. The only way to test the flow is to run the pump. But gasoline is much too dangerous to use inside the factory. How can Dennis run the test without the risk of a fire? Before it is installed in the gas station, workers test the flow rate of the new pump. But to dispense gasoline inside the factory would be incredibly dangerous. Petrol is highly flammable. So for any reason that there's a slight spark, the petrol dispenser would go up in flames and it would cause death. Dennis uses a liquid called isopar. It flows just like gas, but won't evaporate or catch fire. Dennis dispenses fuel for exactly one minute to test how fast it flows. As you can see here, the liters are counting up at a steady rate. He is aiming for a result between 36 and 42 liters. So our result for that nozzle is 39 liters per minute, which is a good pass. It's just one of 17,000 pumps shipped around the world from this factory each year. More than 950 million gallons of fuel flow through the world's gas pumps each day. Without this ingenious invention to fill up our tanks, the planet would grind to a halt.